So this week we do have a new module of the week. So if you're a member of the Talking Drupal Slack channel, you might have seen this. So Matthew Scarset posted uh, earlier today or yesterday that he had worked on a new module uh, for calendaring. Uh, and it's a, it's a small, simple module called Calendar View. Uh, it's meant to be very fast, uh, very quick. Uh, not unlike other modules of the week, uh, I don't think anybody on this podcast has actually used it, but Matthew is, he's been on the show before to talk about some of his modules. He always writes, you know, really short, simple utility modules uh, to kind of solve one use case. Uh, and it was one of the reasons why I brought it up is because uh, we just had a show on Smart Date uh, three weeks ago, I think, episode 339, I think. Uh, and Martin was talking with, uh, Matthew about uh, how to integrate with SmartDate. So if you're using SmartDate, you can expect Calendar View to work with that fairly shortly, I think. And it is described as a lightweight module to display any views results in a calendar table. It's compatible with any view and it should respect exposed date filters. Uh, so it should be pretty cool. What do you mean by it's compatible with any view? I mean, are, are there some style plugins that aren't compatible with Don't make you some, some views? So I think it probably is, is talking about um, the different kind of types of views that you can have maybe. Like the different displays. Like the different displays, yeah. All right, I mean, it, it, it seems interesting. I'm not a huge fan of calendar displays just in general on websites. I think the vast majority of websites just, you know, need like a list of events, you know, unless you have a, you know, a ton of events. This is interesting because it doesn't use any external libraries to render the calendar. That's what I thought was interesting about this. It's all kind of just, you know, there's, there's some HTML there. I checked out the code. There's a little bit of CSS. There's no JavaScript. It seems very lean, very lightweight, very straightforward and simple as, as you alluded to Nick. Um, so I, th I yeah. think it's, it probably has have a you, Have you guys used the the other, the older calendar module, like back in D7? I yes. think everyone the, has. Yes. It's the like, monster one, one, the one with like pretty, all the tentacles. Yeah, pretty yeah. finicky, um, very complicated. Um, I've used full calendar quite a bit because it was easier um, yeah. than recent. So I'm very interested in this being lightweight. I actually added it to my list here. But um, yeah, it looks yeah, let good. Us know, let us know once you've used it and we'll report back. But yeah, I mean, I've I've actually gotten to the point where I generally am able to talk clients out of having a calendar because they're so, you know, they're such a bad- But this could change that. I'd be interested to know how it works responsively because that's always where calendars for yeah, me fall start apart. falling apart. Yeah, I, I think that and when clients add more than a couple of events per day, you know, those yeah. days or weeks end up blowing up. So, if, but if you have a lot more flexibility on the view side, then, then you have a lot more ability to kind of restrict that and make sure it's a little bit cleaner. I mean, but so yeah, some uh, of those things aren't like a module maintainer's responsibility, right? It's like the UX, UX person on the front end who's, you know, um writing some css to make sure like they're displaying better like i mean as long as the standard markup is there for the calendar right like you you, you can add some css to make it look better and respond better if it doesn't right yeah i i don't know if i completely agree with that i think there's a certain expectation that when you install a drupal module that has its own template file and css that you're going to get some minimum level of responsiveness out of the box. Sure. Yeah, I, think that's I, I was wondering whether it even go down this rabbit hole. <laughs> it's because it's, it's a big no. rabbit hole. But one thing that's lacking in Drupal is good user experience out of the box across the board. Claro helps with that. Alejandro sure. is going to help with that. But the problem really arises from when you add modules and everything requires a front end developer coming in and making it usable. It increases the effort yeah. to launch any Drupal site. So it's it's one of the things we have going against us compared to other frameworks. 
I, I think another thing too, in this particular case, one of the problems is, you know, Google Calendar. You know, it it's one of those things where it's a really, really complex problem to solve in the user experience space. And then there's just a ubiquitous example of it done fairly well with Google Calendar. You know, it's, it's like, I call it like the Facebook effect too. Like there's some things that Facebook did originally with images that were like when they first started allowing those in, you know, 2009, 2010, that were just very, very difficult to handle. And because people are like, hey, Facebook does it, they just expect the ability to like have crop and focal point, and, you know, inline editing of images. And it's like, you realize that there's a multi-billion dollar corporation behind this experience that has a whole team dedicated to it. Um, and when, if, if you can get something like this, that's utility, that's clean markup and easier to modify, then that, that's a win for the community. I think Nick just solved it. We should all embed Google calendars as opposed to building no, our No, I've own. done that. That's, been, that's I mean, actually yeah, one that's... case where it's not a great experience. 